Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the second night of the budget meetings for Delhi Township. Today's date is November 17th of 2016. Um, welcome all those that are here, FAB members, department heads, and guests. Uh, we will begin with any opening remarks again from our township administrator, Pete Landrum. Uh, yes, again, I'd like to uh, wish uh, the best uh, thanks to the uh, Financial Advisory Board for the work on reviewing this. Uh, the budgets, uh, they'll be speaking uh, individually on uh, under each department. Also, I want to state that the township budget is available uh, upon the website. Uh, if you go to delhi.oh.us, uh, under departments, under administration, and you'll see budgets. Um, all the financials, monthly reports, as well as the uh, uh, past budgets uh, information and the information we're reviewing tonight uh, can be found there. Uh, as well, once the budgets are adopted, uh, they'll be posted as well. Uh, so uh, that's all the comments for tonight. Okay, then we will begin with the department heads. And tonight, the first department to be heard from is Community Develop Development, Mr. Greg DeLong. Thank you very much um, for allowing me to speak tonight on the budget that is proposed for the Department of Community Development. I'll give you a quick little history of our department. This year was a big year of transition, as you know. Um, we formed the Department of Community Development with the merger of ED and zoning. So with that, we have taken on new initiatives. We've also added planning into the mix now too. So that's gonna kind of roll into the 2017 budget. This year we also saw a big increase probably with the addition of the action line online for complaints. So you're gonna see that addressed a little bit in here too, where in our 2017, or 2017 budget where we're expecting nuisances to probably unfortunately still continue to increase. They increased substantially this year. So to kind of get into a little bit of it, that's a little bit of the 2016. Um, if you look at page um, two, or sorry, page three of the community development section, um, you know, what we're really proposing to do this year is our boards and commissions in the past have only been scheduled to meet about five, four or five times a year. We are proposing a 12 year um, budget for both of those boards. This year we did exceed it with the zoning commission and we had to do a lot of moving money around to get creative so we didn't have to um, request additional funds um, from, the, um, from the board. So that is one of the big changes. So we've actually requested that for both the Board of Zoning Appeals and the Zoning Commission. Um, another big thing we're looking at this year is memberships. Um, one thing that we have not been a member of has been the Hamilton County Planning Organization. Uh, they have been very generous to us over the past few years. Um, in 2016, we received about $200,000 in grant money from them for not being a member. Um, we can receive a lot of services through them, um, such as training, additional mapping services. They can help us on a lot of things. We would get about four, over $4,000 worth of services for about a $3,000 membership. Um, and as we continue to apply for grants through them, the point system will ding us if we're not a member. So it is one of those things that we, we thought would be a good time to request an addition. So that's probably the biggest one you will see um, that we're looking at doing over this year. Um, another one is economic development initiatives. We're looking at continuing phase two of the Plan the Pike rezoning um, map, or map amendment, text amendment for primarily the residential areas. So this would be primarily from Greenwell down to the city corp limits going east on Delhi Pike. We're looking at contracting again with um, McBride Del Clarion. Um, this was originally a proposal to be completed with the first phase. It was split into two phases. Um, we are, as you know, wrapping up phase one right now. Um, you'll be seeing that here at the 30th and hopefully again on the 14th of December. And then we'll start phase two at the beginning of the year um, with working with them. Another thing we're looking at doing is partnering with Hamilton County Development Corp. Um, and this is kind of falls under the economic development side of things. Um, we're out marketing the township, but sometimes we're not sure what we're marketing it for. Um, what are we really going after? And is it a use that is really needed here? Or can we a draw here? Um, and speaking to them, they provide a study. They can do a retail leakage study for us. Um, and I've been working with them on trying to figure out how we can get that done in 2017. They say they can cover up to 75% of that if we pursue it. 
So we're going to ask for a little bit of funding to help cover that additional cost. Overall, it costs, they're estimating about $20,000. So we're asking about $5,000 to help with that retail um, leakage study. So that's one of the big things. And again, you'll see things as we kind of get into the um, line items um, that will try to meet our goals that we have established for ourselves in 2017. One of the things we're looking at is a vacant property registry. Um, we're looking at a new fee schedule for 2017. We've been researching that to make sure that our fees are, you know, we're not losing too much money, um, you know, that we're kind of breaking even on what we're doing. One of the other big things is the um, retail leakage study, and I am on page four at this time. And then also um, we're looking at the, um, we'll have the uh, multi-use trail um, which is another thing we're going to be doing. Um, we've got the $20,000 grant we'll be rolling into next year. And then a few other things we're looking at doing is more business and um, business retention meetings and also um, continually updating our zoning resolution. So if we get into the line items that we're looking at um, for next year, if you get under page six, which is the revenues and expenditures. There's not a lot of change on this one. As you know, we're not a department that rolls in a ton of money. Um, we do rely a lot on the general fund. Um, we are expecting a little bit of an increase with the permits. Um, everything else is pretty much the same except maybe the appeals, which would be like variances in front of our Board of Zoning Appeals. As we're increasing um, code enforcement and things like that, we do expect that to jump up a little bit. Um, you also see the $20,000 grant that we've received from Hamilton County for the bike study, um, bike path study um, that we're doing. And then that's pretty much the big, big changes that we see um, are the big things going on under revenues. Do you have any questions about that so far? I do. Just, just sure. a quick one, Greg. You know, in your comments, you did mention how, you know, the permits and the banner fees were a lot less yeah. than expected, you know, in 16 you know, are we okay with, you know, bumping up our permits a little bit and keeping our banners the same? We actually dropped the banners from 16 into the 2017 numbers a little bit. Um, we're trying to adjust to what our current environment has been. We are trying to promote the banner program better than we have in the past. Um, right now it's looking, unfortunately, we'll have one user for next year, which will probably be the skirt game. Okay, because so. when I look at the banners, it had a, a $4,700 revised uh, budget amount and we're still at 4700 so that, yeah that probably should have been lowered a little bit that's pretty uh, I, I guess we'd like to get to that number i don't know if we'll get to that number or not all right we'll just you know think about whether we, we want to adjust that number before okay. we finalize sure so if we get under page seven um which is the expenditures um for the department one of the Big things you'll probably notice right off the bat is we have combined the full-time positions and the part-time positions into a each into their own singular line item um, before there was kind of a breakout with certain positions but all the part like the full-time positions were all broke out but the part-time positions were combined into one so what we have done is just basically combine the full-time into one line item part-time into another line item so the full-time would be myself and the zoning inspector the part-time would be the zoning coordinator and our administrative assistant on our end. So those are one of the big changes we kind of did to clean, clean this up a little bit. Um, so you'll see a substantial number change um, on some of those. Um, actually, the first one, uh, the 01, um, is actually a new line item we added, which will address the full-time employees. Um, again, we talked a little bit, or mentioned earlier, about the boards and commissions. We have proposed to um, budget them for 12 meetings. So one meeting per month. Um, we do expect primarily the Zoning Commission to definitely meet that as we're improving our, our enhancing our planning efforts going into next year. Um, I, I know I mentioned the plan the pike, but we're also looking at doing more in, um, staff, uh, I guess, you know, change, code changes we'll do internally. So we are expecting this board to meet more next year. Um, Another line item you'll see uh, jump up here is the part-time again, as I mentioned, because of the combination of um, putting in the, the two part-time positions into one line item. So there was a substantial jump in the percentage um, of number there. Um, our postage has been primarily, um, it's gone up just because of the fact we have had a lot of, with our nuisance things, we're having our certified letters going unclaimed. 
and we are certif doing a lot more certified letters. So that also jumps our postage up as we, we send them out certified and it is quite expensive to do that. So that is one line item you'll see that has probably jumped a little bit. Um, printed materials is one that has, it, as you notice, looking at the um, on page seven, it goes up and down. Next year, we're planning on doing a lot more printing. We'll be doing our printing for our zoning permits next year. So it's an every other year thing. So that's why that line item has gone up and down every other year. It's primarily to cover the cost of doing the permitting um, or the printing of our permits. Um, office equipment is one that you also see, which is 0505 that has jumped up. Um, that is one that has jumped up because of the fact of, again, with more nuisances and things like that, our printer costs have gone up. We, ha we do send a co use a colored printer in our department, and we have, probably in 2017, we'll be looking at um, partnering with the IT department to figure out if we can try to minimize this. We have our own desktop printer, and we're averaging about $100 a month just in ink on that little, little printer. So we'll be looking in 2017 to try to figure out what we can do at the fire station because the large printer we have is only a black and white. And so we do a lot of printing of maps for um, residents that come in and try to fill out their permits. So that is just, unfortunately, is just a burden we're dealing with right now. But again, we're hoping in 2017 to um, address that. Um, line item 0507, which is advertisements, you see a 35% increase there. That again is just to address the boards and commissions and our our nuisances primarily and also the addition of the meetings we're doing for zoning commission and the bza those are expensive to run in the paper and we need to do that as we're required by law so you will see that occur um, another increase you'll see is the memberships um, again that is to um, is for basically the addition of the hamilton county planning association and also to maintain myself and um, the zoning administrator or the zoning coordinators um, american planning association memberships which are annually um, always need to be re reviewed. Um, and then if you look at, um, let's see, other miscellaneous, um, this number is looking at worst case scenarios. If we do become members of Hamilton County Regional Planning, um, this line item, which is 0511, does address the, um, a lot of mapping things. So we're hoping with the membership, this number will actually go down that we will not need that service as much going into next year. Um, 0512 is the Medicare um, for employer share. This number just jumped just because of the fact we're planning for 12 meetings for the boards and commissions. That's the only reason why this jumped up. Um, you know, again, it's worst case scenario. It probably won't maximize out, um, but we wanted to be prepared in case um, it does. Um, the next one is 0520, which is IT support. Um, we see a 32% increase, and that was basically to, and this was a number we received from the IT department, and that's to cover additional costs for a third party contractor. So that one jumped up 32%. Um, our, our facility um, use charge, which is 0524, jumped 47%, and that is because with the additional staff member, um, myself, we are now occupying more space at the fire station. So we unfortunately have to pay a little more rent for our, our space down there. And then under the economic development initiatives, it's a 57% increase. Again, that is to cover the cost of um, the plan, the pike, um, phase two, our planning efforts there for map and text amendments with McBride Del Clarion. This is also covering the cost for the retail leakage study that we're looking at doing in 2017. And also this number has in it the uh, Delhi um, Avenue multi-use path study for the bike path that we're looking at doing in 2017. Outside of those major increases, everything else pretty much stayed similar or dropped. And a lot of the drops were due to the um, retirement and um, part-time rehiring of our zoning coordinator. And that is kind of a synopsis of fund 13. Um, street lighting districts, there's really, we're just proposing the typical percentage up, you know, increases per year on that one. So we're not looking for much. This golf officer Libby, did you look at those lighting districts? Yes, I did. And you're okay with those? Okay, good. And that's all I have, unless you have any questions. All right, um, we'll begin with the rest of our agenda, which is the FAB representative, Brian.
Mr. DeLong, we're not finished with you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so as part of administration's review, Andrew Marks and I are the two FAB representatives, and um, Mr. DeLong was in with Administrator Landrum and us when we did the administration where we break it out for this. Um, theirs is pretty, one of the more simpler funds to look at. We are comfortable with what's being proposed and all questions that we had were answered by both parties. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. All right, trustees questions, Trustee Oswald. I just had one question on the page seven, last item 0526, economic development initiatives. You put in 55,000 for the 2017 budget. And I believe you made a comment in your notes that, which is funded by a 100% reimbursement grant. So is that actually 110 and we're getting 55 from a grant? No, we're doing 25,000 for McBride Del Clarion. We added the 20,000 for the bike grant fund that we got from, that we're gonna be getting from Hamilton County, which would put you at 45, and then the additional 5,000 for the retail leakage study. So, so those three grants we already have. This isn't something we're hoping for. Only one grant. Only one. We have one grant. Pass. It's one grant. Twenty thousand bike is in. The retail leakage study. That is that's one we do not have in the in our pocket yet. We do have the bike path study. So if we don't get the retail leakage study, what is that number? We probably won't pursue it because 5, of the fact right now it's five thousand. Okay. But if we don't get that, we're probably not going to pursue it at this point okay. unless we can find some funds elsewhere to help cover the cost gotcha so. that that is an important I, I will tell the board the retail leakage is a vital is vital information to have to be able to show those interested in the pike that how much is leaving the pike because that type of service doesn't exist so when you show that evidence that you can show them that this would be a market that if you moved here that is, is leaving, that it may be worth you coming here. Um, it's just vital information. So I would suggest it's $5,000, but it's, it's information with what we're trying to go into that arms the township with more attractiveness to you know have a developer and have retail come here because people are having to leave to go somewhere else you know we heard about giving an example clothing we hear all the time there's nowhere to shop for clothing well this would be you know analysis on there's no place to have them cleaned either well there you go so so it's a good analysis for five thousand dollars it, it sounds like a lot but it, you know we'll we'll try to get grants on that uh, but you know that that's w money well invested as far as investment uh, into attracting um, retailers and and yeah. And I think businesses. we should probably correct. It's actually ten thousand. We're kind of sitting. Yeah. Okay. That'll get you the fifty five. Mm -hmm. um, and also with the, our contract with McBride Dale Clarion, they have quoted us twenty five. But if we can get a if we have a little extra to probably in case the retail leakage is you know less or more they'll give us a little bit more to play with it, well, yeah and let, let's discuss that real quick sure. uh they mcdale bride clarion had quoted us thirty five thousand for this year to do the um the first phase of our you know commercial zoning the mixed use and everything that we're doing uh, uh was thirty five thousand dollars and that's what we signed the contract and all that but amounts that are coming in what's the estimate now we're still at 25 25,000. So we're but with them, we've actually, this first one right now, we've probably saved about 10,000. Yeah, so we're, we're way under budget we're on way under that. budget on the current. So they estimated for phase two, 25,000. It could be the same underneath. I think mm -hmm. they're just, we just don't they're know. finding it a lot more simpler than, than they're, they had thought. So we're hoping yeah, to and, save. You know, and I think a way. lot of it just is just staff helping them more. So we're cutting the cost down, you know, having two planners on staff now to kind of guide them a little bit is really helping cut the cost. All so. right. Are you finished? Finished. Okay, trustee starts. I have two and it may sure. just be educational for me. That's fine. What does a vacancy property registry accomplish for us? 
we have been looking at this. Um, it's basically helps, we're hoping it would help minimize our nuisance abatement procedures a little bit and processes and the amount that we have. Mm -hmm. It would basically be a registry that um, property owners or lenders would need to register with us. So we have a contact that we could work with and through to get anything addressed on the property. It's not just gonna benefit our department, the community development department. This could also help police and fire tremendously too. So if there's an issue at that property, let's say it's open or whatever, high weeds and grass, instead of constantly coming to you guys and going through the nuisance abatement, we can maybe make a quick phone call to help get it remedied quicker. Um, so that would hopefully cut some costs down for us. Um, I've worked in a community that had this and we we only did about 88 abatements a year when we implemented the program it dropped it to 10. okay so it's just one of those programs we're not sure how it will work yet um but we're, we've been in communications even with Colerain township they have it on their books right now and it's working quite well for them so we're looking at probably trying to mimic theirs a little bit to see being a township to township to hopefully help us out and help the other departments too great my second question sure. is looking at all the lighting districts if i'm reading it properly we're losing money on them and you're saying you're only we're going to go up one percent why would we not want to i'll help answer that mm -hmm. thank you those uh it, it, you'd have to go to the very front of the book under administration uh, page here let me i'll guide you right to it the front part of the introduction part mm -hmm. if you go to uh page 11 of 12 and uh, page 11 of 12 and if you look at the lighting districts they all have fund balances and our goal in a lighting district is not to grow fund balance so what happens is we had, we assess the cost I, th I believe it's every three years mm -hmm. uh, on, um, there, there's a rotation of what we look at and we try to guess and you realize guessing what electric costs are going to be we try to guess what the assessment needs to be to fund that over three you know the three-year period and if we've over assessed then we need to spend in deficit and drain the, the balance down so that's when you see uh, some are negative well we don't want to charge homeowners any more than we have to so we'll we'll drain that down and then the next three years we'll look at what the balance is we like to keep nine months to a year in balance and you're not talking significant balance one has eleven $1 hundred dollars one has twenty nine hundred so it's not much we want to keep a little bit of in there so we're not negative uh but you know we're trying to guess what the rates are and guess you know all that stuff so it's a purposeful spin down meaning we're looking at the cash fund and, that, and saying hey we don't want to assess any more than we have to to, okay. to landowners Okay, so thank you. That, that's thank why you. you'll see negative. All right, thank you. Okay, um, Greg, I just had a couple of thoughts. Um, how many of the nuisances are coming to us online? Oh my gosh, that's I don't know been the breakdown of it, but we probably, I would almost, I'd say seventy percent. Great. Yeah, Great. it's been a it's been a big increase. They'll we'll come in on a on a Monday and we'll have some, during the summer. It would not be uncommon to see five to twenty. The people would email in over the weekend so. um on the banner program mm -hmm. being down as far as people contracting for the banners i don't like to see the metal things up there empty so i think did we buy the flags last year or yeah we, we own our we own flags our well, own we'll Delhi. keep something up there that's not going to be an empty bracket right, right. okay we'll All keep right. ours up as long as in between i think I, that's another thing too some of the costs up there we could consider which i i think we would have some funding in there in this budget because it's been talked about that not only the De the Del High logo ones that look really great up there but the the other thought was that we'd have produced that were like for uh, a fourth of july kind of celebration something with the flag you've seen that something that you know if you if you kept like if you bought the kind that was decorated and didn't say necessary fourth of july but had the flag up there you could use it for veterans day you could use it for you know various holidays um so that's a, that's an idea that we could do too so it, there's something always up there and presentable because you wouldn't want to leave our you know one flag up there like forever because number no, one it'd no. be weathered and i don't want to see me right. empty brackets up right. there either right okay and my other question is i think you um kind of reviewed all of your board members and everyone's back on your 
zoning boards for great. Super. All right. That was all my questions, Fiscal Officer Luby. Greg, you mentioned in your notes one of your goals for 2017 is to hopefully enforce the sign regulations on the business corridor. I mean, what does that entail? I mean, are we looking to start fining businesses or well, on the encouraging business them? Corridor, we, 2017 is going to be an interesting year when it comes to signage on the business corridor. One of the big things we're going to have to do is go out and actually address the non-conforming signs that we're going to be creating with the new new zoning district that's going in place. So a lot of the signs that they're going to be, the permanent signs, will be grandfathered in. So we're going to have to do all that. We're also going to just get out there. We have a lot of, unfortunately, we have quite a few business owners who are just ignoring our rules. And one of the, one of the projects that our zoning coordinator has been assigned to do, and I actually have it complete by the end of this year, is to get out and meet with those property owners and sit down and explain the rules and regulations. Um, there's some of them that have signs that have no permits, and we, we're trying to get those addressed also quickly before the new regulations go into place because I, we don't think the signs that they're probably wanting are going to work under the new regulations. So it's just a little bit of that kind of stuff we're trying to do is we're really just trying to get people to understand the rules that are in place. Um, it's more education than anything, and that's pretty much what our goal is, is to get it dressed up. Okay. Yeah. I see when anybody comes out saying, you know, Delhi is forcing us to buy new signs. No, we're not going to do that. Even, I mean, even with the new over or the new zoning district in place, everyone's going to be grandfathered in for their permanent signs until they choose to change it out, and then they'll have to bring it into compliance. Yeah, because one of the catches to that is once a business is empty, mm -hmm. it's empty, and a new one moves back in. That sign, if it was, if it may have been compliant when it was filled, but now that it's been emptied and unoccupied, when a new person, new business moves back in, that sign has to meet the new regulations. Okay. So that's that's, that's how pretty standard. Yeah, that's standard everywhere. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yep. But that forces you know over time that things come to be the way you know Beautiful. the new regulations. If not, mm -hmm. nothing ever changes. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, do I have any public questions or comments? All right. Then we will move to, thank you, Mr. DeLong. And we will move to Parks and Recreation. Josh Torbeck, Director. Thank you, trustees. Um, I'm a little bit more excited this year coming around to uh, present this so um, got some good news I'll talk about but first I'm gonna go over 2016 and ask if there's any questions and then I'll dive into uh, the 2017 proposed budget uh, summary 2016 our biggest project would be the paving uh, of course a lot of that is done by contractors but uh, it was really a group effort between us and Public Works as far as preparation uh, communication planning and uh, finishing off the project once it was done so I think everybody would agree that transformed uh, Delhi Park and it's it's been a significant improvement as far as staff the only real change we made was taking the full-time horticulture horticulturalist position and uh, eliminating that and creating a new part-time greenhouse uh, nursery coordinator position that was really the only major change we made and that trans transition was seamless uh, we didn't see any drop off in anything so that went well as uh, as far as events, uh, I think everybody here would agree that the bicentennial celebration was uh, a big part of Delhi Parks this year. We host a lot of events. We're part of a lot of events, uh, from the dog days to uh, this, all the historical society events. Uh, we played a big role in that as far as trying to host or be a part of the event or as be as accommodating as possible for those events. And I think that was. A pretty big success this year it was neat to see the different organizations and individuals come out for that. And uh, the Parks Department was pretty excited to be a, uh, a large part of that uh, celebration. And you have to excuse me, part of this budget I prepared before the levy was passed, so some of the notes in here are a little dated. Uh, one of our biggest concerns in 2016 was the budget. Uh, we knew that going into November that we, we would be trying to pass a levy. Uh, with the passing of the levy, a lot of those budget concerns have subsided and the foreseeable future seems, uh, seems very positive and bright. So um, that, 
that part of uh, our aspect, our duties, the budget seems to be intact. I'm going to go over some line items, uh, and this is for 2016. This isn't proposed for 2017. Just some changes that happened during the course of the year. On page 11 will be your best opportunity to kind of follow along with that. Account 0101, salaries full-time, and I touched upon that, is the elimination of the full-time horticulturalist position. We actually made that change after uh, the budget hearing uh, towards the end of the year, so that wasn't reflected in the budget. So that decreased about $20,000. 0102, seasonal uh, salaries, that increased by 33000 and not because we appropriated more money. We just transitioned some of our part-time what were labeled as part-time positions to seasonal positions. Uh, they were positions that end. They had a seasonal deadline to them, so it didn't make sense for them to be in the part-time line item, so we just moved them over. So no money changed. It, it was just reappropriating where those people were placed in, in the budget. Uh, 01, 03, salaries part-time, an estimated decrease of 12500 We actually added the greenhouse nursery coordinator position to this line item, but because we moved all those uh, seasonal people from part-time to seasonal, there was actually a decrease. Once again, the money didn't change. It was just about reappropriating where people were, were positioned. Then 0201, 0202, 0203, the PERS, was just adjusting those to reflect the changes that we'd made in the personnel. 0819, health insurance. Uh, we estimated an increase of about $8,387 this year uh, for two reasons. One, we had an employee who took health insurance about halfway through the year. And then we had another one that enrolled in COBRA. So that makes up the increase that we had. As far as operations, 0503, uh, playing field equipment. At the end of 2015, we actually purchased a sprayer. It just carried over to 2016. So that's why there was an increase there. Uh, and we did auction off the old striper. 0609 lighting, same thing. We actually purchased a, a, a large quantity of LED lighting for the lodge and the senior center. It was purchased in 2015, but it carried over to 2016, so that's why you see that increase. 0703, ground repairs. Uh, we did trail repairs in 2015, 2016. We didn't do trail repairs, and we did a little less contracted out tree removal. Uh, we like we try to do the smaller trees in house, and the larger trees we subcontract out. Uh, so we felt as though we had less larger trees that need to be removed. So we didn't do as many, but we still over the foreseeable future, probably still contract them out to do a, a couple uh, services a year. And then 0825, summer programs. Uh, with the anticipation of the bicentennial uh, celebration, we increased our summer program budget just to help assist or put on the concert or, or really do everything we could do to help make that celebration good. So that's why there was an increase in there. As far as revenues on page 10, only two accounts where we saw kind of a significant change. 0306, uh, we saw a decrease of about $20,000. That's because in 2015, we sold two mowers and a pickup truck. Without selling two new mowers and a pickup truck in 2016, obviously there's gonna be a significant decrease. Um, and also, uh, when, uh, when one of our employees enrolled in COBRA, that also uh, creates an increase in revenue for us as they, it's also, as you saw, uh, in our expense, if it's, they pay in and, and to us and we pay out so it, it evens out but it was a it did call for an increase in, in, uh, in that particular part of other uh, 0601 transfers in uh, because of our proposed expenses uh, the general fund did increase the subsidy for 2016 of about fourteen thousand dollars with 2016 coming to an end uh, our cash balance we predict to be about 178 thousand which would actually be up about seventeen thousand uh, from 161. Uh, the big reason for that is I think we, we continue to become more efficient and reduce uh, uh, a lot of our spending as far as just being more efficient with our operations, uh, figuring out how we can do things and, and utilizing our employees the best we can. As far as major changes in 2016, I kind of already touched upon it. Really the biggest one for us was just the change of the one position from full-time to part-time. Uh, everything else kind of remains status quo. Any questions about 2016 before I go to 2017? Trustee Oswald? No questions. Trustee Sturtz? No, thank you. Um, I don't know if this would really come under a question, but I found it interesting in looking at the park facility revenue. Mm. If we looked at 14, 15, 16, if we look under the lodge, we've had a steady increase in revenue from the lodge 
and this is with giving the nonprofits a, a no charge rental. Yes. Amazing. Yes. That is, that's that was Great. yeah. Well, great job on that. Well, we have a price point that really can't be beat. Uh, it's it's really a nice service that we can provide uh, at a reasonable rate. So it it I think by word of mouth it's really just grown. I can't say it's anything that we've done other than just try to promote it, but um, it, it it's done well. But I, I was pleased to see the increase in the revenue from the rentals. Okay. Trustee Oswald, questions? Not yet. All right. Good. Continue, Mr. Torbeck. So 2017, uh, you know, as I spoke about before, uh, one of our big hurdles uh, could have possibly been budget. Thankfully, for the passing of levy, um, what was once a hurdle is, is now something that we can look forward to. It, it, it's something we think will, uh, will drive the, the Parks Department for a while to come. So that, that's no longer a, a huge concern. Of course, we'll still be fiscally responsible, but uh, it's, it's no longer kind of the, the monkey on our back. Some of the significant differences uh, between 2016 and 2017, uh, once again, this is on page 11. If I go too quick through these first couple, I kind of rearrange some salary line items. So please stop me if I'm, if I'm going too quick or something doesn't make sense, but I'll, I'll try to make it as clear as possible. So in 01, salary is full-time. We, we expect an estimated decrease of about 81,000. Two major reasons. One is the transition of the park service worker from full-time to part-time, and it's a part-time variable position. What we're doing with this is the six months a year where we feel is the most important, he's able to work the 40 hours a week. But in the off-season, when it's snowing, when we don't need him as much, that's when it becomes variable, and it isn't necessarily a full-time position. So we've made this a part-time variable that in December, January, and February, are only working about 8 to 16 hours a week. But when we need him in the spring and the summer, it's a 40 hours a week. So a significant decrease because of that position transitioning and then the moving of the park coordinator position to shared services. And I'll touch upon that a little bit more later, but basically what we're doing with that position is a lot of the responsibilities were either with the recycling fund as far as smashing dumpsters or applying for grants or coordinating events. Uh, so we thought it was appropriate to put it in, in shared services just between admin and the parks department, not any other department, uh, to share some of that cost of what uh, that position was doing for the recycling fund. 01, 03, salaries part-time, uh, estimated increase of 36000 One reason is, as we talked about, the transition of the park service worker from full-time to part-time, so that increased it. And then with the passing of the levy, the addition of the special event coordinator, which was part of our levy campaign, was, was talking about adding more events, more festivals, more movies, things like that. And we needed someone to head that up and really uh, streamline that. So that would be the addition of that position. 0105 is salary shared service estimated increase of 38,000 and that directly correlates back to the park coordinator position shifting from full time to the shared services. 0201 and 0203 <coughs> is PERS and those changes are just to reflect the changes we made in, in the salary line items. 0819 which actually goes on to page 12 is health insurance uh, estimated decrease of 19,000 once again, directly reflects back to uh, the transition of the park service worker from full-time to part-time and the moving of the park coordinator position to shared services. 0803, shared health, uh, ser uh, shared health services or health insurance. Um, estimated increase of 3,000 hours because of the transition of the park coordinator to shared services. And then 0846, which was a new line item we created for the park resource officer uh, another part of the levy was uh, collaboration with the Delhi Police Department creating this position who would be in the park seven days a week. Uh, so we need to create a new line item. It's basically a, an agreement with the police department that we'll pay them this amount each year uh, to, to make up our part of paying for this, uh, this position, salary and benefits. As far as operations, um, 0818, uh, general liability insurance. Uh, so we did this as kind of... <laughs> This isn't set in stone, obviously. We, we haven't crossed this bridge. This hasn't been presented to you, but we wanted to be forward thinking in case we did move in this direction. Uh, you see a uh, general liability insurance estimated increase of 3,000. Uh, there's been some talk and discussion, and obviously there's still more to be had, and I hope to have a, uh, 
a presentation for the trustees in December uh, as far as what's going to happen with the concession stand. But this would directly correlate with the future of the concession stand, that if we ever decided that we wanted to get a liquor license, if we wanted to sell alcohol, this would be the increase to our liability insurance for us to be able to do that. So $3,000 is in there if we were to move in that direction. Now, obviously that decision hasn't been made. It hasn't been discussed to the full amount. So if we were to go in that direction, this wouldn't change. That $3,000 would not exist. So, but I wanted to put it in there just in case we did move that direction. 0825 summer programs. Uh, once again, with the passing of the levy, we, we want to have more activities in the park. This gives us the ability uh, to, to you know, get the bands out here, to get to movies, to put on festivals, to have the people come out. Uh, it, it's expensive to do that sort of things, and obviously we'll look for partnerships, but this gives us the ability, you know, to get the ball rolling with that. And then 0843 Park Office Rental, uh, an estimated decrease of 3700 With the building of the new firehouse, uh, I think you'll agree the grounds and the landscaping is a little bit different than the old firehouse, and we'll be in charge of taking care of that. Uh, that and with the uh, CIC properties, we'll be, we'll be taking on some additive maintenance. Um, but just the Green Health, uh, Greenwell uh, Avenue Firehouse, the new one, what we've done is just pretty much called it a wash. They're going to take away the rent, and we'll take care of the grounds. Like, can't you arrange a barter between the fire department <laughs> on some of this, between their um, green space maintenance and your rent? Yep, so this, that's, we're getting rid of it, and that's, we're, calling it, we're calling it even. As far as revenue, um, 0101, 0501, which is on page 10, I'm sorry, 0502, 0503, uh, real estate property tax, the rollback homestead, um, all estimated to increase by about $241,440, and that's directly related to the passage of the park levy. 0302, field rentals, uh, estimated increase of about $3,300. Uh, for two reasons. One, we're introducing ball field fees this year for uh, the regular season, which we don't expect a ton, but a little bit of money from that. And then we plan on having a couple more tournaments this year. Uh, our regular league, our not whole league, who used to take dominate the weekends, is no longer dominating the weekends, which has opened it up for tournaments. Uh, and tournaments are really our main source of revenue for the baseball season. So we plan on having, we used to have about two, we'll probably have maybe four or five this year. 0314, the senior center, uh, senior center rentals. Uh, estimated decrease of 5,000. I know this is going to seem odd because the senior center rental is 6,000, and I only decreased about five, but we expect increased revenue. So minus the 6,000 from the senior, but we expect maybe about 1,000 more in rental. And then transfers in with the passage of the park levy. Obviously, this is, this is decreased because we no longer need to be subsidized by the general fund, which is a fantastic feeling. Um, but you'll, you'll see we still will receive $10,000 in reimbursement uh, for the maintenance of non-park properties, which I, includes you know, the fire department, police department, the CIC properties, any non-park property. Uh, the ending cash balance, uh, we estimate uh, with the levy passing uh, an increase in 47000 in 2017. Uh, so in 2017, we expect the ending balance to be about $225,000, uh, which is which is good because, you know, as the levy works, as we get towards the later years, it, it kind of flips and we'll have a nice little bit of an exit or egg nest for this, uh, for any future expenses. Uh, what significant organizational department services changes do you expect during 2017? I kind of hit all these while I was going through it, but I'll just recap of, of what we're looking at. Uh, with the park levy passing, uh, we're going to be introducing a park resource officer with, uh, with, in collaboration with the Delhi Police Department. Uh, a special event coordinator to help us organize and put on those uh, more events and, and more things going on in the park. We also, this year we don't plan on using it, uh, so, but in the future, uh, at some point, a senior center coordinator, which will help the seniors as far as uh, if their leaders ever step down and no one steps up, this gives us the ability to put someone in place to help run the facility, put on events and programs, and kind of lead them uh, moving forward. So this does give us the ability to, to help them if need be. Uh, you know, fortunately, with the park levy, no services will be eliminated. Uh, we plan on additional programming. Uh, the parks department will be operating without subsidy from the general fund. Uh, besides receiving reimbursement from uh, the additional properties we take care, uh, we feel so we're in great shape moving forward. Okay. Trustee Oswald, questions? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, field rentals. Are, do we? 
Every field now has a rental. We're not doing free fields at this point. Every ball field during the spring has a rental fee with it. Correct. Why do you say during the spring? Well, during the fall, if someone wants to, because the, the fees weren't set up to actually make money. It was more of a way of making uh, organizations responsible. We have people reserving field, fields and not using them. We have such a, uh, a need for field space that this is a big problem. You know, we're telling one organization, you know, we don't have any space, you can't use the field, but then they drive to the park and four fields are empty. So this is a way of making them accountable. In the fall, when there's plenty of uh, field space available for the, uh, for the teams and the organizations, we didn't feel it was necessary to make their a fee because it wasn't really about you know, charging them money. It was more about making us more efficient and, and, and utilizing the fields as much as possible in the spring. So basically, there's such a high demand in the spring, little supply, we are going to impose the fee. So that's going to bring it down a little bit? No, that wasn't the idea. The idea is... We put a lot of effort in, so like on Saturday when the guys spend the day dragging and lining the fields, we have organizations that might reserve Delhi Park in another field just to have extra space. So when they don't show up and they don't give us a phone call, we've dragged and lined the fields. Because we're free, they'll go to the other place because they won't get charged any fees, and, they'll leave our, and they won't come to our park because there's no penalty, no reason for them to show up if they don't have to. Where if we impose small fees, now there's a reason the way I was telling people, it's like my wife's gym membership. If it's free, she won't use it. But if she's paying for it, she'll go. Uh, so we aren't trying to make money. Our fees are still lower than everybody else around. It's just a way of imposing this, this need for them to use it. So we can, if they don't need to use the field space, there's plenty of local teams, you know, that need it. You know, if someone else isn't using it, these teams definitely need it. This is a way of just trying to make sure that we make them accountable and then can open up field space for teams that really do need it. Well, I guess my point is I hear from a lot of these organizations that local organizations can't get the fields and these outside organizations are coming in because they know we have the cheapest fees rather than going to green, that kind of thing. So what it does is increases the demand and then the local organizations can't get on the fields. If we increase the fees, it decreases the demand and then allows other people to get in. So I, I, I would think we may want to consider that in the future because I think everyone knows we have the cheaper fees oh, yeah. and that's why everyone's coming here. So they'd rather drive 15, 20, 30 minutes extra knowing they can save money, but then our local organizations get shoved out of the way. So if we increase fees, people are going to go away, then they'll stay in green or wherever they want to go. So I, I would urge in the future to maybe consider increasing those. Well, so this is, our price this is brand new. It's brand new. But oh, I know. Just, yeah, this is the first year. No, I know. Year. We've never had, yeah. we've we've never had, had it. it, but we've talked about it, yeah. that we've had to put it in, and this is the first year. But even then, let's see how the, the supply and demand is come spring. Oh. So we'll, our fee structure is tiered. So depending on your residency, if you're 75% or above, it's one rate. But if you're at 25% or below, you're significantly higher. So just the fee structure should accommodate the local organizations and kind of by nature push other ones away because it's so much higher for those that have a lower amount of Delhi kids on the And I asked the how they knew that and they have to submit a roster. Submit a roster and then we actually go through and look at, um, luckily because of GIS we can go through look at the roster and then figure out if they're actually Delhi residents or not. And amazingly enough uh, they're always a little bit lower than what they say they are. So. We do do our due, due diligence, and we go through it and make sure that they are done. So I guess this will be a better question next year once we have the hard numbers. See how it goes. Yes. See how it goes, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how about the spray park? What are your plans? Uh, so there is some um, money in there to – we have to do some repairs, some electrical repairs to it and some surface repairs. Um, Leaks. <laughs> well, Leaks. Leaks. so we thought <laughs> – <laughs> this is yeah. a good time for this question. So we thought we had it fixed, uh, and we and uh, we just got a new water bill this week, and and there seems to be something wrong with um, how they're billing us. So in other words, it was high. It was very high, but it was estimated. They didn't do a natural reading, so they estimated it high. So I've contacted in the last three days, and I haven't got a word back from them. Um, if they're estimating it, it's going to be higher. If they don't go in and actually check it and look at the deduct, it's 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 going to be high. So uh, what we're doing right now is just working with them to make sure that they realize there's a deduct in there and that needs to be checked. It just can't be estimated. Because half the bill is a sewer bill, and that's a significant portion of it. If everything's working out, the deduct is working, and they are able to check it, the bill is significantly lower because of things that we've 
checked and fixed. We've had many leaks repaired yes. this year, so we expect it to be lower. So if they're using an uh, estimate off of the, say, last two years or something, it's it really needs mm -hmm. to be looked and actually read. But that's not just a, a problem with that particular meter. They do that. Um, we're having that issue with a bunch of meters because we close down our restrooms in the winter and we blow out the water and obviously there's no water being used and they estimate those bills as well. So it's a continuous struggle to get them to not estimate our water bills because we're not like most organizations where there's a consistent use of water um, in the winter. Obviously it goes down and they still estimate those. Uh, so it's, it's a battle that sometimes we have fixed and then it comes back around and then we have to go through the, you know, the whole thing again but uh our last bill was high but that's because sewer was on there again so do you still anticipate seeking donations from community groups if if we can get the ship righted as far as them consistently not estimating our bill uh, our bill really isn't in as, as high as it has been in the past so uh, as far as donations i, I don't think it's needed if it, if it really is done properly now if someone wants to uh donate it's great to have your name on that sign in front because people really do appreciate this organization's help so we'll, we'll actively seek it um, because I, I think there is a sense of pride in the community when people see you know whether it's St. Dominic or DAA or Seton or whoever else puts you know gets their name up there I think those those organizations uh, they like to do it and I think the community really uh, reciprocates that so we'll seek it but I don't think it's as necessary as it has been in the past. Concession stands are we using the same vendor this year? So <laughs> that's the big. So I haven't covered that yet. <laughs> so when we get there, uh, my answer is going to be the same. I I would have liked to have something done in concrete before now. Um, it's just you know I think several of the people that are interested wanted to see what happened with the levy. Uh, you know we had talked about you know possible liquor license and stuff like that, and I think they kind of wanted to get the board's input. Um, and and the person we had last year was great, fantastic. I don't know if it's worth his time to come back. Um, we're still in negotiations and talking. Um, I hope to have uh, basically three options for you guys in December before the start of the new year. And then you can take a look at the three options, weigh them, and, and give me feedback on what you think would be best. I, I was hoping to have it for you today, but I, I don't. And this would be a basically we take a percent of what they sell so we don't have any employee fees, right. inventory fees, that stuff. So I guess typically I think last year, what do we get, 8%? 7 7%. So if we incorporate the beer and we pay three thousand dollars for the license, I mean, I'm trying to think how much beer we need to sell, you're, but I, you're not going to, to break get even. it. You're not. We're not going to break even on the beer alone. And, and the biggest thing, uh, trustees, is and because Joshua and I have had extensive conversations on this, is when we're moving to um, the festivals or uh, moving to the concerts in the parks and all that that means that vendor is going to be the one to wanting to sell that versus us picking up a temporary alcohol permit and having uh, selling the liquor uh, and being able to then offset the cost of that program of the concert with what we just made. So there's a conflict with the skirt game. Well, there would be that could be that too. Uh, we've always written it into their contract that they would not compete with that so we've been lucky with that but I'm just talking about our concerts and parks now the movie nights the programmings where we're going to have the park field the vendor if we hire a vendor they're going to want to have sole rights to those events well, well then we can, we can negotiate that out and they're not going to they're come not, it's not going to be then they're not going to come that's that's the issue there's not going to be enough for them to motivate them to to come for that um, so with that gone we're not going to have any interest so it's really looking like you know, if you get basically put, if you get somebody, they're going to want to have the alcohol sales to make it worth it, and they're going to want to have sole rights. You can negotiate probably out the, the skirt game because that's really not us, but all the other events are really us. Um, they're going to want that, and all we would get is the flat rate of 8%, 7%, whatever it is of that, and by the time you add all that up, it wouldn't pay for the $3,000 for the extra license. But you could, license. you could renegotiate special events in a higher percentage, so even if we go up to 15%, they're they're going to make more money. We make more money. So I mean, we don't have to be locked in at a seven percent for you every know, you, event. You, you could, but it, it's the level of interest, and that's that's what's interesting. He's feel, doing the feelers and what what is really realistic, and and so for right now, the concession stand you know budget 
only reflects just some minor, you know, electric bills and stuff like that. There's nothing else really in, in the concession mm -hmm. fund right now. Uh, that's going to just have to be something that's, you know, I think he's going to present the options and, and get more direction from, from the board and see what the options are. And we can always appropriate, you know, in the future uh, when the decision's made. I, decision is going to have to be made February, March, somewhere soon because then baseball season starts mm -hmm. and, you know, things come around real quick. Uh, but it, it, you'd have to have a lot of sales to in whatever percentage just just to break it for us to break even but even at a higher percentage we really need to try to offset the cost of our say concerts and things we need the full percentage of the profit so to speak to so we can offset those costs as as a park organization so you know even 15 percent is not going to even make a dent in a concert series or something like that so it, it's a hard decision. It's it's like the only thing that's going to get a vendor almost to come in is to have a alcohol sales because what we found out this year, he did not do very well at all with the food. I mean, there was days he made ten what, bucks. What was our total bucks. revenue from the concession this year? Uh, not even. I don't even think we broke a thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. That's but it didn't cost us money. We're not in the hole over the concession stand well, just electric, just a little yeah. bit because we, we pay like because of the electric the utilities and then any upkeep of the building and we had a little just a little bit of work done on it but for the for the most part we broke even yes i think we've got a lot of work to do on this liquor sales though well i'm glad we're looking into it i mean three thousand dollars is a small amount if we have three successful concerts or movies i mean that's that you can't really it's not parks never make money i mean it's there as a service it's going to lose money so if we're talking fifteen twenty thousand dollars for an insurance policy that gets crazy three thousand recoup, recoup some of it to have successful events and bring people to the parks i mean that's what we've got to balance and that's what we, with your three options we should look at well it's going to be very detailed what i present to you maybe over okay. detailed um part of the thing is we did a detailed sales report of each day so you'll get to see the sales for each day so maybe the option is you know, and that's not open seven days a week. It's only open these days, or we only do special events. I'll lay it all out there for you, and you can kind of see all the numbers. And then based off that, I, th I think you guys could have a pretty good idea of, of what direction you want to head with it. Um, obviously, with the events, you know, the alcohol sales were, you know, what pushed those events, you know, into, into the profit area. So um, hopefully I'll have that to you in December, and then we can get a decision before the first of the year and, and, and get moving on it. Fishing, same amount of events. So, <laughs> um, this I haven't presented to the board yet either. I'm meeting with two individuals um, the first week of December about um, the possibility of setting up a, a basically a nonprofit Delhi fishing club, and they would be in charge of uh, putting on maybe like a, a event each week, every Sunday from this time to this time, uh, where they have their own liability insurance, they help put on the event. I think it's something we can do, it's a possibility, um, but it's something I have to sit down and discuss with them and then present to the board. Um, I, I'd like to expand our fishing events, but I think this is a good way of doing it, where we have, we have an organized group we can partner with who can take off some of that burden of you know having to have staff working that a particular event on the weekend or you know going around. Uh, with garbage or assisting people with fishing. So I, I think if these two indiv individuals that are very interested are willing to go through that process with us, uh, I think that's something that we can definitely increase, not just to, to 10 or 11, but maybe to 20 or 22 events next year. So worst case scenario, we'll still have our eight that we had last year. Yes, worst case scenario, we'll still, we'll, we won't decrease. We'll either stay the same or, or increase in amount of fishing events. Uh, you talked about the concert series, the movie. You said a special event coordinator. When would that person start? Well, as soon as uh, the budget's approved, uh, we'd put it out there. I'd sit down with Lisa, and we'd get the, uh, uh, the ball rolling as far as getting that job uh, posted and then getting them hired probably in, in January, late January, early February. Uh, we need them in there. Uh, it's not just about them being at the event. It's them planning for the whole year, and that takes some time. So we'd like to get them as soon as possible. And I assume that's the same answer for the park resource officer? Park resource officer will depend on heavily on, on the Delhi Township Police Department, but I would assume that would be pretty close they're, to the same. They're on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They're on it. I don't have anything else. 
Trustee Sturtz? Okay, not to beat a dog, but information I like about the alcohol and everything is would it carry over to events where we could sell alcohol from the lodge and SCC? No. Okay. No, those would have to be separate, and that's kind of why we're – the more I cr crunch the numbers, the more I'm – it's it's becoming difficult for us to – to maybe make money on everything. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, when we talk about just special events, I mm -hmm. think the, the potential for um, making money is great there, but logistically it's a lot simpler than it is at the lodge or the senior center. Right. If we were to get liquor permits there, people could no longer bring it in, mm -hmm. and then they'd have to almost like pre-order through us. We'd have to order, then meet someone at the lodge to stock it for their particular event. And I think logistically, I'm not sure if it would work. Um, we looked into it but i, I your it, event coordinator could handle that possibly. possibly possibly okay so my concern would be whoever the vendor ends up being in the concession do they have to pay over 21 year olds to serve if they open and serve them a drink yes yeah i mean so that may cut down on somebody on, wanting to work what a teenager might want to work or a college student you know correct whatever. okay as far as you know hiring mm -hmm. you know summer right. help you you know 16 year olds probably more w willing to work for a, right. know, a smaller rate than right. someone who's okay um in my past life as event planner <laughs> um i do know you can get a liquor license for beer wine and alcohol for 400 dollars a day yes per event which seems a lot cheaper if we're gonna you know unless we're gonna do 10 events or eight events that might be more cost effective and <clears throat> and that'll be one of uh, one of the things I discuss is, um, you know, with our events, it, it might be more reasonable just to get it right. per the event instead of for the whole entire. And time. it's limited to one a month. Uh, yes, there's a certain amount of days you can get it. Right. So what you could do is right. piggyback because it's good for a couple of days. So you could do mm -hmm. like a Thursday concert and then an event on Saturday and piggyback right. off of one permit. Right. One so permit. you get your most bang for your buck instead of, you know, we could call it, you know, Del High Days weekend or something where we have four events lined up off of one permit and, right. and, and make that money instead of trying to just do one event per okay. permit. And, and let, let me just say one of the, one of the ideas mm -hmm. is if the concession stand that we want to do the special events so that we sell the, you know, hold the special liquor license and make mm -hmm. maximize the, the profits right. for that, that then the concession stand, one of the ideas is that it won't be open the concession stand itself won't be open but the uh, an idea and it's an idea so just he'll float it later uh is to actually contract with various food truck vendors that would be permitted to come through there's plenty of them they would love to have access to delhi park and we would get a percentage of their sales and not have to maintain a facility food would be available and we wouldn't have to worry about overhead or the the concession stand at all and we'll just use utilize that place to stock the alcohol for when we have special events or something so that that's another idea again it, it's out there okay. thank you <clears throat> okay um each department has talked a little bit about um their manpower and what we can expect are you expecting any retirees coming up in the next year just the one so i, I think there I is to one mention that is uh the park service worker that I talked about transitioning from full-time to part-time the reason we're doing it uh, next year about two or three months into the year is because of the retirement of the person in that position so okay. after they retire we will be transitioning that position. so there's some okay so in there. the budget there's there's a little bit of money in there because um, you know they'll be in that position for two or three months and then they'll transition to, into the part-time role so okay um, then also uh, grants uh, the spray ground the knee house property um there's a couple of other places where we could probably use those where are we on you know writing a grant <laughs> looking for a grant <laughs> for grant park <laughs> that's right we um as far as grants we're uh, probably going to make a send something to the board to approve us applying for a grant uh, with kaboom again for a playground uh we have probably two locations in addition to Delhi Park, but also at Five Points Park. We believe in the spring that uh, we have the possibility to put a playground there. So we'll, we will be applying for a grant for, for playgrounds for those two locations. As far as Knee House property, we have uh, another uh, organization who is, is very, very, very interested in partnering with us to develop it as far as uh, helping with grant applications. 
um, raising the money, uh, doing anything they can to help because they want to be a big partner with us. Uh, I, I didn't. I hesitated to say anything because I wanted to make sure the levy passed because I didn't want to try to develop something that we couldn't maintain. Uh, now with the levy passing, we can start moving forward with uh, this this partnership as far as uh, finding out, you know, moving forward how we can get the park developed uh, and, and done it in a mutually agreeable way. Um, they're they're terribly interested, uh, and I think they have the resources to really help us move forward with that park. Okay. Um, with the levy passing comes great responsibility because, you know, your residents have given you great hope and faith in the fact that you will have better security and better safety in our parks. And we're talking about events. So I don't think I would wait until spring to start scheduling anything. This We need to deliver on the promises we made with this levy. Absolutely. I, I, I told one of my guys, I said, good news, the levy passed. Bad news: the levy passed. Now we got to. That's right. <laughs> now we got to put our money where the, you know our mouth is. So uh, we're we're ready to go. Um, I, I couldn't be prouder. I couldn't be more happy with the staff I have. They're amazing. Uh, obviously, uh, you know anything that I, you know, I achieve is directly related to how successful and helpful uh, they are. So uh, I have full confidence in them moving forward. Okay. Um, all of my concession stand comments. I'll wait until I see your plans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not a big fan of the concession stand. I, I openly admit that. Um, Fiscal Officer Luby. Josh, are we missing out any opportunities to market our facilities, uh, the lodge and the senior center? I mean, it looks like the shelters are, are pretty busy during the summer. But, you know, are we marketing it on our website, on our Facebook page? Uh, is there an opportunity with public radio um, to get the word out? I think there's always room for improvement. What we've started to do a couple things is uh, we just started introducing a monthly newsletter that's coming from the Parks Department. Uh, we started an email list where we're getting this out to all the local organizations. Uh, but part of that is you can sign up as an individual. Uh, I think one of the things in Delhi, one of the problems is you always hear people say, well, I never heard about it. So instead of, you know, social media is great, uh, you know, community access is great. All these are great tools. But I think for a lot of these things, we need to get right to the source. So we're hoping to grow this email list that includes events going on, but also, you know, don't forget you can rent the lodge or don't forget about the shelters. Um, that's one way we're trying to get to people. Uh, me and Mr. Landrum talked about, you know, the, the possibility of, you know, collaborating with different organizations, nonprofits to maybe uh, to get some signage on the actual shelters themselves as far as, you know, we're working in collaboration with them, you know, to maybe increase revenue but also kind of put a name to that shelter, not just Shelter One, but maybe so-and-so shelter or something like that. Um, so we're hoping that kind of brings recognition to the shelters as well. Uh, as far as marketing, you know, the local radio has become a great partner with us. We have them for all our events. Um, they've been a, a, a great companion, so I'm hoping in the future that's something that will continue to mature and blossom with them as well. Yeah, the, the lodge, the senior center, uh, there's um – advertisements that run on cable access four for the advertisement uh we post it on facebook every you know every once in a while just as a reminder that those are out and also on our website under the parks department is the uh the uh, clearly labeled parks department called rentals and then you go under rentals and the lodge and senior center with pictures inside descriptions rental forms everything's out there so it, it's it's more accessible more information out there than ever not to say we can't improve but it, it's definitely i think that's part of the reason why we we have seen an increase one thing I'd like to see too, Josh, on, on your charts is maybe, you know, you show the number, the days that are rented, but maybe the number of days that the facilities are rented. That way, kind of give us an idea of the increase as well. I don't think that's on there. It's not, okay. but that's, that's easily attainable. All right. That's all I have. All right. Our FAB representative, Charlie. Thank you. Uh, Pete Feitner was the other FAB member involved with the uh, reviewing the Parks and Recreation uh, Department. Uh, Josh was very well prepared this year again for the, uh, the budget. He was able to answer all our questions. As you can see from your discussion, there was a whole lot of issues going on this year and a lot of things that we delved into. But uh, between Josh and Pete Landrum, uh, they were able to answer all those questions. And uh, 
our concerns. And so we, uh, Financial Advisory Board, does recommend the adoption of this Parks and Recreation budget. Thank you. All right. Um, any other questions from the board? No. All right. Um, public questions? Sure. Come to the microphone and identify yourself. Ed Kappel, uh, representing the seniors of all things. They have a question about the roof. Um, I, I see it on the TIF list for 2020, but it's listed as CDBG. What might that be? Community Development Block Grant, the same people who paid to have the uh, pavement paved, uh, we will be submitting uh, a grant request uh, to have the roof replaced. And, and was there any um, talk to insurance companies about the damage to the roof with all the storms we've had with homeowners' roofs being replaced? Yes, we actually... We actually submitted two claims uh, because we weren't happy with their answer for the first one, so we had someone else come out and reevaluate it, and they, an insurance company came back with the same answer. So we tried twice after the storms, and they, they didn't feel as though it was necessary to replace the roof. And Josh talks too fast. Sorry. <laughs> what, what makes up the 38000 increase in shared services? That was the transition of the park coordinator position two shared services, but it, that, that particular position is only shared between the administration budget and the parks department, not all the budget, not all the departments. So now you're paying for half of it or all of it? 75%. It was 100% under full-time salaries. So then since it became a shared, 75% of that amount went under his shared service. So it's just a relocation and actually a reduction for him. The, um, the beer thing, if, if what Josh suggested, I, I know that Tony's expecting to have baseball tournaments, Memorial Day, Labor Day, and 4th of July. So if you have a concert two days or three days before, I'm sure you can sell beer during those baseball tournaments. All kinds of parents sitting around waiting to watch their kids play ball. Just a Actually, in conversation with Tony Kappel, they use some of that, though, as their own revenue. And that's what Mr. Landrum was referring to, was that balance between the groups that use that and sell it. That's their revenue. That's their gain. And we, most people that we would be contracting with would probably want, you know, no competition so exactly yeah i mean tony wouldn't be into, interested in any of the beer revenue we just i'm just suggesting that you try to make it so that you can use that oh and yeah. in fact he's that's all i had okay thank you mr happel and i'm done for tonight see you later <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you mr torbeck um, next, we'll go on to administration. Mr. Landrum, you're on. You want to skip concession? Oh, are you going to do concession now? I thought well, we well, pretty we much were, tore that apart. I thought that dead horse got buried. <laughs> There's not much to discuss, but go ahead. Well, I was gonna okay, be Josh, let's oh, hear oh, it. Oh, yeah, we as have well. that in TIFF. Yeah, we have that in TIFF. Oh, and recycling, yes. And recycling. Uh, sorry. No, that's okay. I wasn't going to touch concession, but I was going to uh, just touch upon recycling real quick. Uh, the, uh, as far as revenue, the transfers in, uh, because of what we discussed about the park co uh, coordinator position moving into shared services, one of that being the recycling fund, there had to be more of a transfer in to cover that cost. And then we actually just got an email today about the litter prevention contract. Uh, that will be no longer existent in March. They might... Um, Dan might be able to talk a little bit better about this, but Hamilton County Sheriffs basically are not continuing that program. We're hoping um, there's a different organization, I forget their name is there, that could oh, step in and do it, but we're not certain yet. So that number could fluctuate. Right. See, what, what used to happen, and this is what's very frustrating on this, okay? We used to, through that program, used to be able to sign up, and we got free, free 
uh, for the sheriff's office, and I think the uh, recycling people paid for it, uh, reimbursed the, the sheriff's contract or, or however, that they would come. And, and here's the big kicker is that we're talking county roads litter, for the most part, litter pickup. And so that was great. And then all of a sudden, all the, the amount was 50% reduced. Well, we went for, what was it, six months, first six months to nine months. We said, you know, those are county roads. We're not going to pay to have litter picked up on county roads. That's not our right-of-ways. Well, uh, after we got months and months of calls of complaints, and we figured it was best for us to pick it up or it wasn't going to be done, and it made the, a big black eye on the township as far as appearance-wise. So that was about, what, $2,500 a year, some, somewhere around that vicinity. Well, we said, okay, that's a, you know, we can do that. Uh, now we're at the point where, okay, now the sheriff's not even going to do that, and we don't even know what the cost would be or who would do it. Uh, whether, you know, again, it falls back, and this was an email I kind of responded to Josh and Dan, is like, it's county roads. It's county right-of-ways. It's really not township responsibility to start with. We were trying to go above and beyond for our residents because we didn't like what we were seeing. But how are we going to, and maybe this is more of a political question, make the town, uh, the county you know, pick up their litter, or the trash that's along there? Um, we don't even know what method, and I don't think we would want our own public works department or parks department going on long county roads and picking up trash uh litter so i you know it, it we will have to follow and see what happens but uh, number one it was the cost that we were paying for that and number two now it's like okay we don't even know who or how that may be performed in the future at all and then how much would that cost and if it's even more than what we were paying half of the half of the amount before so it's a quandary, and there'll have to be more to come, but that's kind of where we're at, Dan. It's, it's good through March, right? March, March of 2017. So we I think they something. did it. Did they do it every every month or twice? Uh, come yeah, come on up, Dan. Get the pro up here. <laughs> Please, Dan, correct me anywhere I may have been wrong. <laughs> uh, so far, you're right. Um, the service that we got from the county, um, the city of Cincinnati will pay half of the Hamilton County Sheriff's. Uh, the email that we got today uh, from Recycling or Hamilton County Environmental Services said that the city will no longer pay that. The Sheriff's Patrol immediately has stopped. Um, Keep Cincinnati Beautiful has agreed to take care of the rest of the year. We are paid through March of 2017. So Keep Cincinnati Beautiful has a uh, group together with a uh, nonprofit called, um, I think it's Lawn, Lawn Care. I don't know if you got, I forget the name of the company, but it's a, it's a nonprofit that uh, works with underprivileged children to teach them job skills. Um, along with that, they're going to be doing the, the litter cleanup for us. Uh, with the sheriff, we were guaranteed, or they came in twice a month, um, two times a week twice a month so it was usually a Tuesday and a Thursday I do believe um, and did different sections of, of the township we do not know what this new company will do we do not know the time frame um, so as, as they get more information from them they will let us know and I'll pass the information on along um, the only good thing we got going for us is it's getting a little bit colder out so you know the, the, usually during the winter seasons the, the litter does stop some um, once the snow starts to smell again, it, it's going to get bad, and it's going to get bad quick, um, not only here in Delhi, but throughout the city. And Hamilton County is working really hard to see what they can do. Um, I talked to, to Michelle this morning, and she is not aware um, of any costs of what it may be next year, what it, um, if, there is, if there is even going to be any kind of litter prevention for next year. Um, it has been on the chopping block a couple of years with with their um, budget crisis so it it may just go away and then we're kind of stuck and like pete said a lot of the roads that we have on there are county roads we apply each year and basically what what, what we do is apply on the roads that we know have litter issues 
if there was something on, it, it, and, and actually the most of the are the, the mainly traveled streets, but if it was something on like our power to Greenwell Avenue or, um, you know, Alomar or something like that, they would also pick up that litter also. Uh, so all we need to do, if, if we knew Alomar was a heavily littered place, we would apply for that. If we rewarded the, the service each year, they would do that too. So unfortunately, yeah, a lot of the streets that they did were, were county streets, um, but they're not limited to just county streets. They would do our streets also. Okay. Bottom line, what is recycling going to cost us then? You've got this. The recycling rates are actually with, with the new uh, agreement with Rumpke, the re recycling rates have gone down some, um, not a lot. Um, Unfortunately, Hamilton County, with the residential recycling incentive grant that we apply for each year, they have uh, they are reducing the amount that's going to be awarded. So what that means is we are averaging probably about a nine nine point two recycling rate in the in, in the township. Um, if we can get that, which puts us in a certain bracket, the more we recycle, naturally, the more we get. Uh, we're in competition right now with naturally the city of Cincinnati but also like Ross Township. Um, um, I, I can't think of the three entities that just did the, the, uh, the garbage agreement. All of their recycling rates have, have skyrocketed. So they're gonna be taking more of, of the res residential recycling incentive grant away Whole from- Rain Township. Whole Rain, yeah, that's what. Um, their rate, I think Whole Rain's recycling rates have nearly doubled. Um, so that piece of pie that Hamilton County is reduced for next year is being reduced more and more because of the of the garbage agreement that they have. Um, so we're fighting we're fighting for ways to increase our recycling rates to try and keep basically our money at the same. And I'm working. Hamilton County is great to work with. Uh, environmental services are great. They have you know we'll meet every once in a while and talk on the phone a lot and come up with different ideas on how we can attempt to to increase our recycling rates. Um, there was a suggestion earlier this year, I think Trustee Sturtz made it, about increasing our recycling or Del Del clean up Delhi days, mm -hmm. maybe adding an additional one. We can do that. Um, with the cleanup day, there is not a lot of recycling done there. Uh, that is mainly trash. Uh, we can look into doing electronic, for electronic recycling. Um, also, we can now do recycling of carpets. Um, clothing, um, that can all be applied toward the grant. So we can exp expand our, our cleanup day to include carpet. We can expand the cleanup day to include, you know, clothing. Um, if we want to, we can e electronics. Oak, our uh, Oak Hills and, and the Mountain have a really good electronics recycling day program going on. Um, we might be able to partner with them also. So there are various ways that we can look to increase our recycling rates. Um, the cleanup day mainly is garbage right now. Um, we do take tires, we do take, you know, the white wear and things like that. But the main part of that is, is just the garbage. Well, and like he said, you know, the, the grant itself is being reduced because they're just cutting it. And then because other uh, jurisdictions are increasing their amount significantly because of having, uh, um, trash districts and stuff like uh, Colerain did, they're getting the bigger piece of the pie of what's left, so ours keeps going down. Uh, this does present that uh, the transfers in uh, subsidy is $15,000 now to the recycle grant, where just a couple years ago it was hardly anything. Mm -hmm. So I will remind uh, the board, and I know it's a great service to citizens, to residents, uh, but this is a non-mandated issue that we're not mandated to recycle for uh, residents. Uh, recycle, uh, re each resident has the option through Rumpke of uh, contracting to have curbside uh, recycle. Um, that's something that, that's why uh, Colerain, when they went to a trash district, that the recycle was in their contract and everybody gets curbside recyclables. Um, so that it's just it's just one of those things now for now the general fund can continue to subsidize this but at some point in time if that keeps going down and keeps going down 
it's one of those items that we're providing a service that's not a mandated service that you know it's not in the township's duties that we must perform recyclable for uh for citizens but or residents but um it is something we're doing because it doesn't benefit everybody because what about the argument could be made that people pay for curbside assistance and they don't get anything out of that yet tax dollars are being paid for that you know it's it's that whole argument i think it's a great service if we didn't have um um if we had recyclables but didn't have say the the bins and stuff like that um the the grant money that we could get if uh would go towards more cleanup days and and, and prevention stuff uh, but now it's really the grant money is being used to pay for dumpsters. Uh, uh, the recycled dumpsters is a big cost. Five percent of is it five percent of Dan's um, salary uh, of his time is coming out of this because all the time he spends and from compacting and cleaning up and picking up and the grants and everything. That's why we felt, of course, then really that's kind of we put that there. But then of course it's general fund subsidized, so. It's, kind of helping pay for it all right was there anything else on recycling trustee oswell question yep. trustee starts yep. good Doesn't officer luby yep. all right and next we have tiff tiff <clears throat> there's only uh one in in tiff for 2017 and that was the uh, flat roof of the lodge is uh <laughs> is in bad shape so it's it probably needs to be replaced sooner than later. Um, I mean, it's it's not it's not doing well. And me and Pete sat down and talked about you know TIF requests and, and what needed to be done. And obviously that came up. But one of the things that came up as well is it's no secret that I'm trying to get the park office over into the park. I've tried you know mentioning different avenues and, and different ideas. And, and I think this one's my best. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we. We really feel it's important that uh, the park staff, at least the office employees, get over into the park uh, for, for lots of different reasons. One, we're more accessible to the public. Uh, operationally, you know, our, our guys that are over there, they don't have access to a printer or a computer. They have to come over to the office to use that, which is the second floor of the firehouse, if someone, anybody doesn't know. Uh, if someone calls and, and mentions, hey, what's going on here, and our guys are out at Storywood's cutting, or they're on the mower somewhere else, uh, and it doesn't make sense for them to drive the mower all the way back to the shop, get off the shop, or get off the mower and, and come over. So we have, we have to drive over. Just operationally, and logistically, it just makes sense for the office to be there. Um, so instead of just replacing the, the roof, what I'm proposing is, um, and if you kind of go through your pages, is, is not blowing out the whole front of the lodge, where the stone facade is, where the entrance to the lodge is, that would all stay. To the left of that, um, you can see is kind of a wood slated area that's about 31 feet long and has a cold storage area. Right now that's, it's disgusting, it's dirty, it's where we keep our dirty mops, it's, it's wet, it's cold, there's no HVAC in there. I mean, it's, it's, it is what it sounds like. And that's um, a part of that flat roof. It's a part of that flat roof. Uh, so what we're proposing is, is bumping that out about another 10 feet, making a separate park office entrance right there for people to come in if they wanna look at the lodge or reserve the lodge or if, uh, you know, during the course of the day, if we have somebody in the lodge and they need help with maybe a microphone or something like that, they can knock on the door and we're there to help. And we can also set that up instead of having staff come over. Um, basically bumping that out, replacing the roof. Uh, we also have uh, a compressor for the cold, uh, the walk-in area right there that's going to be need to be replaced as well. So this quote we have right here includes replacing that and the flat roof. Um, if we do the flat roof now, it doesn't make sense to do this ever because then you just paid, you know, $9,000 to have a flat roof done and then we tear that out and, and do this. So I, I think now's the time to take a look at it. Uh, what you see right here is just a quote, the 55.9. Uh, obviously, I think anything over, after over 50 has to go out to bid. So um, unless we are able to get this down, we'd probably uh, maybe do some things in-house or, or try to find a way to, to bring that down. Otherwise, we'd, we'd probably still have to go out to bid and see what came back. And it may be lower, it may be higher, but we at least know this is a good starting point of about what this would cost. Um, the, bi the big thing about this is, um, you know, big costs are putting in restrooms. If we were to put somewhere else, the restrooms are already on site. Um, we're not talking about building a new structure. You're just adding on to a structure. Uh, 
you know, telephone's already there, you know, cable's already there. It's just about moving around a little bit, but everything we really need is already on site. Um, we've, we've discussed a couple other options in the past as far as, you know, potentially some other buildings on there becoming available in the future, but I really think that this is the most visible, uh, the mo it makes the most sense. I think the least amount of investment needs to go into it to make it feasible. Um, for me as a park person, I, I want to be among the public. I feel like I'm kind of hiding from them sometimes up there. I want people to be able to come in and ask questions, uh, for them to have a question in the park and then leave and come over to the firehouse to ask uh, a question or try to find us. Uh, I, I think this is just a service that we can provide, but at the same time, uh, we can help out our employees who have their boots on the ground who, you know, if they just need to look up something real quick and print it out, they don't have to drive all over. Um, so that's kind of the goal and, and what we're looking at. The flat roof does have to be replaced one way or the other. It's just whether we want to move forward with this and replacing the flat roof at the same time. And that price includes replacing the flat roof and, and the compressor. So it's, it's everything in one. And all How I ask much is the roof? Just the roof. About nine thousand. Nine. Yeah. Yeah. The, the roof is what is in the current TIF budget. This isn't. The roof slated in there for nine thousand dollars. What's a compressor cost? I can tell you off the top four, of my head. Four thousand, five thousand, Dan. Five thousand. So you're gonna have fourteen thousand of the fifty-five right. nine yeah. that is part of that. Actually, is the roof and the compressor. Yes. Okay. Questions? Trustee Oswald? Nothing. Trustee Sturtz? Nope. Thank you. Obviously, you've got a lot of paperwork to do, <laughs> I guess, and um, we'll be hearing from you on a few things here. Yes, shortly. Okay. Trust, um, fiscal Officer Ruby, you're finished? Yes. Can we dismiss him? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Thank you, trustees. All right. The final and last presentation this evening is administration by our own administrator, Pete Landrum. All right. Uh, general fund. Well, let me, let me start by just saying uh, the first time since I've been here because of state budget cuts, reductions, estate tax, Elimination, uh, government, local government fund uh, reduction in half, personal property tax, utility tax, you know, we can go on forever. Uh, but what has been submitted to you is a balanced budget. It only took me leaving to do that. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm very proud uh, through this. Uh, just a touch on 16. We had our challenges in 16. Uh, several different things were the uh, adopted when we adopted the budget uh, we adopted a $219,000 deficit and I'm just kind of on my uh, administrator letter page 1 of 12 you know, in the chart so 219,000 was about our deficit that we adopted that we thought uh, what we ended up uh, my estimate is about 289 so about 290,000 now that's more than what we adopted but what happened during that is of course we funded the CIC of about two hundred thousand dollars on the purchase of for economic development of two properties uh, so that's part of that so then that leaves okay deduct two hundred thousand that leaves about ninety thousand well we subsidized the park of a hundred and fifty thousand so if you take away the park subsidy and the CIC we would be a balanced budget in 2016 actual actual numbers but those two issues and now we know from what we're hearing thanks to the park passage that the park subsidy is one of the reasons why we're able to uh, be balanced because that is is no longer an issue um, so very proud of that um, the cash balance and everything I, the, the chart on page 2 of 12 really 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 tells it all I mean when you go back to 2001 you want to see that we were taking in revenue of uh, nearly 3.3 million dollars and having expenses of 3.8 um, compared to uh, the to 2017 proposed to 2001 actual dollars uh, the revenue has been reduced by 64.8 percent 
and expenses by 70.1%. Wow. Um, it brings my point up to that we would have been unable to do this. Uh, I think everything timing, timing is everything sometimes. And when I first started and saw, you know, oh my, <laughs> what are we going to do? The thankfulness, the good news is that we've been good stewards of the money all along. Delhi Township rubs two nickels together to get a dime. And, and that's very good. Uh, because of the fund balance that we've been able to maintain and stock away and save away, that allowed us some time to right the ship during some transition period. Uh, with that, we instituted shared services. Um, shared services, I'm on kind of page three of 12. I wanted to correct some of the numbers here to, to, to make it look, uh, be correct. But for 2017, shared services, and this is not including workers' comp or liability insurance because they pay their own portion of that uh, already. But total shared services uh, for 17 was $723,939.84. So $724,000 was the total shared services. Now, when we go through the percentages, everything is broken down. Um, give you an ex uh, just so people understand shared services for for um, um, the employment side for the staff wise uh, the HR manager is shared services the our assistant to fiscal officer is shared services a facility uh, foreman is facility is uh, shared services the two mechanics are shared services and of course uh, we talked about uh, Mr. Ryan his position is partly shared services but just with the admin and recycle. Uh, but with that, you know, every function is uh, how you determine that shared services is, is different. Um, the HR is based on full-time equivalency of employment. So what drives HR is the number of employees. What drives uh, uh, the assistant to fiscal officer is the percentage of budget that everybody has. Uh, what drives the mechanics is the amount of time each department is spending on, you know, they're spending on working on cars, fire trucks, you know, and that kind of thing. That's more actual time, as well as the facility uh, maintenance person uh, that is driven on actual numbers of how, long, how much he's worked in on buildings and, and, and things of that. So just to give you how did we how was this? You know, when I first came, I, I did it the first year and estimated it, and, and it took us a two-year tra uh, uh, transition into it where general fund reimbursed the first year 67%, 33 the second year, and 2016 was the first year that it was fully uh, on the backs uh, of the actual levy funds, um, which included, though, the first year we did it, uh, fire department, we did include, I included an estimate in the fire department of the shared services, and that was part of the levy. So it passed with that. The next time, the last time the police department went out uh, for the levy, shared services was part of the budget. The shared services was also part of the budget for the parks department that just passed. So these numbers are now built into the levies, and that way they can sustain it. So just to show you, because I, I'm really um, adamant about this just from a, an accounting perspective, but of the $724,000, um, the general fund shares about 103000 So general fund pays its share of, you know, based on number of employees, based on the facility work, based on our vehicles, based on everything like that. This cost, though, if we would have kept just ignoring our, our situation that we would have been in, uh, just for 17, that means the general fund would have had to have paid an additional $620,000 in its budget on behalf of the other departments. Um, and you could see that how quickly the fund balance would disappear over a period of time if you did that. Um, and, and the whole thing, to be honest uh, with this, is that um, if the general fund, let's say, let's just pretend that at the state level, they decide um, to give townships a buku load of money to the general funds, okay? I don't know, whatever source of revenue, but man, we are in it. 
And we say, you know what? You know what that's going to do? That's going to be able to, where we can lessen the burden of levies on the fire and police. We won't have to ask for much because the general fund will be able to help them out like we did in the past. Absolutely. But it's a different method of which I recommend we do it. In the future, if the general fund has the ability to assist departments and lessen the need for future levy requests, shared service expenses should still be reflected in the appropriate departmental funds and a subsidy provided as a revenue to the funds. So I'm a big believer that a pro proper accounting method is showing the expenses in the funds in which they actually occur. Okay, so what, be, what happened before is the general fund was directly paying for the salary of, say, the uh, mechanics out of the general fund. Well, it should be like it is now, uh, so, uh, uh, allocated to the actual cost of who's using the service. So that, that, that's a big change just to get, not to harp on uh, shared services, but there is a lot of misconception on what shared services is. Let me say this, shared services is nothing new. It's very old, it's just that Delhi wasn't utilizing that and wasn't accounting for their expenses in the proper funds of which they were being used. Now they are, so it's very good. Um, all right, let me uh, go through a few things. Um, I'll start on page, we got several funds to go through. <coughs> All right, let's uh, page, uh, in, I'm under the administration section now, uh, page 10 of 23. 10 of 23, okay. You've less than 20 minutes. I'm going to finish that up. <laughs> he's, he's. 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that concludes my summary. <laughs> <laughs> um, revenue, page uh, 10 of 23, just real quick. I know I can be long-winded, but I just want everybody to understand. My apologies. Uh, really, the difference in revenues, let me state this. The revenues for 16 are really looking pretty good. We, it, didn't, it, it, it didn't hurt that we received about $100,000 in um, um, estate tax that was totally unexpected, unbudgeted, and that's one of those things when somebody's estate must have went through probate finally because estate tax ended in, I think it was the end of 13 or 12, I forget, but this is the cleanup, so you might see from time to time if a, something gets settled in probate finally. Uh, so that was helpful. Uh, but another thing that hurt us, <laughs> well, let me go to another thing that helps us. Um, interest in bank account. Uh, Fiscal Officer Luby has done an excellent job now. We've taken the money out of Star, Ohio, and now uh, Fiscal Officer Luby transfers every single month. He's able to transfer out of our operating account into the investment account and he gets good interest rates on that. And, you know, before, like, we were only getting, well, 2015 the actual was like 6900 almost $7,000. And this year, I think it's 20, we're estimating 20, over 20 some thousand dollars. So he's more than doubled that by just, you know, watching the money and moving it to and from investments as needed. So kudos to him on that. Uh, the bad part. <laughs> And so we're, we are estimating uh, the adopted budget is going from 9,600 in the 0901 account uh, from 16 to 25,000 uh, in 17 because he's doing such a good job. Um, the interest gain lost. Uh, this is the 0905 account. This is the the regular uh, investment accounts that we pay uh, Fort Washington uh, that they do our investments for. Um, we had budgeted. Uh, basically 71,000 uh, in that. Uh, the previous year, you see we almost did 91,000, so that doesn't sound far off. Uh, we may be lucky to break zero this year. Uh, if, if, if Jim wants to bail me out on explaining this, it, it, this number reflects our net gain and loss, so as they buy down points or uh, Go ahead, Jim. Basically, so at, at times, you know, they may be buying investments at a premium. Yeah. And, and I think that's why you've seen, like, in 2015, where our investment income was, was 91000 you know, when it comes time to sell these investments, uh, we will take a hit. So it is a matter of timing. Um, you know, they are the professionals. That's what we pay them for. So, um, you know, we do uh, – 
we're kind of at the at their mercy to get us the best return on our money. So we might have years, you know, like like this. So um, unfortunately, uh, you know, we hate to see those types of swings, but it's not uncommon. Yeah. So this year, you know, we may literally break even uh, at zero, and we had budgeted seventy. So that was a mm. hit. Um, we did ask what their best projections were. Um, I budgeted 70. They were projecting 83, 84 from Fort Washington, and they did it three different ways, and that was they were all in the 80s. And after this year, I still was scared, so I budgeted even less. I budgeted 70, but, I mean, that was we were given the number from them in the 80s, and I went ahead and just budgeted 70. Um, again, it's all based on their timing and premium. And, and in the long run, you know, with what they're doing, their strategy, it is going to benefit us. But you just may not feel the benefit in one year and then get 90 or 100,000 the next year. And it just makes a little bit of swings and it's a little bit unpredictable. All right, so that's the investments. Really, the other forms of revenue have been very consistent and good and, and stable. So there's really, revenue-wise, we're pretty good. Uh, going on to the expenses next page, and let me go through these uh, quickly. Uh, legal fees and other, those have went up. There's a, uh, an increase uh, from our law director as uh, on the basic annual amount, uh, which we have not given him an increase in years, years. Uh, so there is an increase there, but also he is doing more and more work thanks to many of our initiatives that we're doing. Um, nuisances, nuisances, of course, he has to do all the legal work on all, every nuisance. So uh, any more that uh, Greg and his department can lessen those, that will help the, our legal fees. Although we charge that when we do the abatements, but, you know, I'd rather have less charges up front and receive less, uh, less reimbursement uh, if possible. Uh, sidewalk assessments are down, uh, 1301 um, expenses. We have less sidewalks. More roads uh, that we're doing next year have, do not have sidewalks, so sidewalk improvements next year will be less. Uh, on down, audit fees next year we will be paying for a two-year you know, biannual audit. Um, election expense for next year is down compared to this year because all we'll be paying for should be out of the park levy that we just ran, which should be very cheap considering it was countywide election, nationwide election, mm -hmm. all those other costs. The, uh, the lower, uh, the more stuff that's on the ballot, the less it is charged for us. So hopefully it's very, when we ran the police uh, levy that one year, it only cost us like 3,900. So I'm hoping it's very minimal. Uh, next page, just trying to cover some of this quickly. Uh, economic uh, development initiatives uh, in 2641 uh, is $20,000. Uh, that's an increase from uh, the adopted of the 5000 but it's down, of course, from our revised because that's where we bought the, uh, the homes. Um, is there, there is a potential that one of the properties, if we, you know, and this would be on the CIC part, but that amount is to help pay for... Um, any of the, I can't, I'm not going to have the electric off, but any, uh, we do have the water off, but you still have to pay a, a minimum service charge and all that. And, and Greg is going to be applying for uh, grants for demo and all this other stuff. But we do have a possibility of, how many times, 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, possibility of um, maybe renting one of the places out. If that would occur, that could help us offset some of these costs and would transfer less of general fund costs um, is a potential way, that way we lessen general fund costs. Uh, transfers out is the next line item. We're 325000 and that's down significantly because of the park. So all we're subsidizing now uh, is 10000 for the park uh, for reimbursement for the services they provide, uh, reimbursing, uh, subsidy to the zoning fund, the you know community development and subsidy of fifteen thousand to the recycle fund. And let's see, uh, building repairs on down oh seven oh three. That's increased. Uh, that's this building, and we're gonna have about a four thousand dollar maintenance issue with uh, our generator. So thirty five hundred somewhere around there. Uh, so I had to increase that. Uh, 
pretty well, like I said, uh, this is presenting a balanced budget of actually $2,593 in excess. <laughs> so, and we see other opportunities maybe, of, you know, if we can rent out for the CIC, then that'd be less money we'd have to fund to the CIC. And so there could be hopefully some savings. Any questions on general fund? All good news. Good news. Good to be there. Okay, uh, next one is the bond fund, which really this is a transfer from the bond fund, retirement fund is on page uh, 17, and it's basically just a transfer from the TIF into this fund, and this fund then pays the debt service, and the debt service is the 2001 uh, bonds from when we refinanced in 2011 and then of course the new firehouse is all in here and that's that's all it is if the money comes from the TIF transferred in as revenue in here and then this pays the debt out so it's in and out uh, I gave you a handout earlier and let me do that before I do TIF real quick the handout that I gave you at the beginning and I forgot to include this is a self-insurance program fund which mm -hmm. is fund 20 and and basically um this takes money from the different departments uh basically the 85 percent township share but it's not exactly 85 percent because we pay 10 percent of the um the lower plan the value plan and of course the employee pays more than 15 percent if they do the buy up because they're buying it up so it's not quite but let's just say that it adds it takes the 85 percent basically of the township share and the 15 percent basically of the employee share drops it into revenue okay that's where you, th this fund is funded from uh, then the expense is everything we kind of have talked about it is the claims it is the cost of the stop uh, gap insurance uh, we have everything as far as maximize what we're, our stopgap maximum is. It also includes 75000 for the indemnification that we have to have uh, on the policies, 50000 for the MedBin and 20000 for the Pan, America, um, Pan American. And we do have the wellness program in here that we're expecting to continue to get funding from the workers' comp uh, wellness. Uh, so remember, though, the biggest part is 80, about 85, and I say about 85 because of the various plans, 85% of this money is really, it's a repeat. So when we look at the total budget, the total township budget, you have a repeat here of 85% of this money because the 85% 85, 85 is taken out of the departmental budgets mm -hmm. put in here, and then this is spent again. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have a duplication of expenses here, so that's a kind of inflationary expenditure, uh, just like kind of like when we transfer from the TIF into the uh, bond service. That's kind of a duplicate of expenses as well. Uh, so that's this is our first year on this, so <laughs> let's hold our breath, but uh, we'll go on. And, and last thing is the TIF. Um, let me get to that because I want to get to the page. I'm on page 23 of uh, 23, okay? Um, the last page of, in that section. And basically, the transfer out part, I'm going to talk about just the things that everybody else didn't talk about the transfer out is that 928,000 that goes to the t uh, to the bond uh, service fund and it's broken down there as the amounts uh, the building additional for fire this is the 500,000 that will go to help pay for the new Greenwell fire station part of that is part of Turner's amount and part of that is the amount we'll need to do the things we still have to buy such as furniture and and so forth out of that uh, we hope to stick to that budget now I, I will say how much time I got Okay, uh, I will say that I hope that we are able to stick within that budget, but um, there will be money that's unspent this year that we will not spend this year and will not be on a purchase order that will not be rolled over, but that we'll need to reappropriate that money that we didn't spend for the firehouse into this budget, okay? So at the end of this year, whatever is not, been able to be covered under a purchase order will go back into the bank we'll need to go back into the bank and reappropriate that same funds into this but we won't know that till january okay uh, so no really additional it's just what we didn't spend last year will roll over uh, okay so then the only other item site improvement eighty thousand uh, uh this is a uh, in 0216 
includes a roof replacement administration. You guys know by your offices how many leaks we've had. It's beyond, it, it's got to be done before we really do some serious damage. Uh, it's already leaked to the first floor, so we have to get this done. Uh, security systems replacement ad admin and police of $50,000 as well. And as we've talked about the new Greenwell fire station, uh, the other two fire stations all have this same security and we're going to be able, you know, employees have to be secure. Mm -hmm. uh, the buildings need to be secure under today's environment. So this uh, helps them all under one operating system where they can, uh, a person can manage who has access to what by the, you know, the use of the card. So it's very good. Um, computer equipment, 38,000, that's IT capital, uh, loan payments, uh, 16,000, that's part of the uh, public works debt that continues to move forward. And I will say that Ron's amount was 450 that was reduced by 50,000. Um, and the rest are the reimbursement to schools, uh, for, to make them whole and other fees associated with the TIF. Uh, and then, of course, Josh mentioned $9,000 is the last item that whether you decide to do the flat roof or go on. <laughs> and I better hush. Three minutes. And I think that's it. On 16, that was it. I think I've covered all the funds. All right. Brian Gilligan, FAB representative, <laughs> administration. All right, Brian. Quick. <clears throat> As with all the other ones I've been up here for, Pete, um, and Jim have both answered any of our questions. We do not have any issues with what's being proposed for administration and we recommend that you prove what they've asked for. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Fab. Um, any questions from Trustee Oswald? No questions, just good job department heads. Good job, Fab. We're short on time. I'd say more, but great job. <laughs> Trustee Sturtz. Same thing. Thank you again for all the work that you do. We know it take, it's a lot. Thank you. Super, thank you, uh, fiscal officer. Thank Lugan. you. <laughs> All right, I think we're out of time. Oh, we have three minutes. Oh, well, we, sing? we could. We could. Well, well, I do have one uh, okay. thing. Okay, you quickly, three, three minutes. minutes. Quick, no, no, I can't. Part of the TIF that I, I am recommending that we have to have, unfortunately, and this came after the budgets were submitted, it's a total of $18,825 I'd like to submit on TIF that is all part of our HVAC controls uh, the hardware and software at various buildings, but you're talking the senior community center, you're talking this building and fire headquarters, that if we don't do this, we're actually going to lose control and the ability to control our heating and air. And now I don't, I don't think the seniors would like that, uh, but like it, it, yeah. yeah, but it's, it's a need. It's about $19,000 to do that. And, I, and I'm recommending that we do add that to TIFF. Keep in mind, on TIF, we did receive a hundred. You mean to add that to the bottom line? Yeah, to, to the TIF budget. Spend. Yes, but keep in mind what we what wasn't included in here is that we did receive about a hundred thousand dollars more in TIF that we just found out about a couple a uh, couple weeks ago than we were expecting, which is good news. So that inflated, we got about one hundred and forty thousand dollars more in TIF. So TIF has increased, which is good. So that. That would help us out, but I, I'm recommending that or it's going to cost Is that number more. reflected in this available? Uh, 100000 no, no, it's not It's now. not in there. No, okay. no, because that's so brand new. That's what I'm saying. So the number is $100,000 more. Okay. So that's good. All right. All right. Thank well, you. then that, without any questions from the citizens or public, all right, then that will end our budget meeting for November what are we, 17th? 17th. 17th. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. I mean, you guys are so much. You I guys know. know that. We know. No, we know. We know where to find you.